Declan producing here. And yesterday was the deadline for teams to reach contract extensions with franchise tagged players. And so the big conversation around the NFL was Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott's going to play on a $31 million franchise tag. And then we had our episode yesterday that uh, that talked about the possibility of Dak Prescott maybe being available for the Vikings in 2022. So go check that video out if you haven't already, or go check out that podcast if you're listening on the podcast feed here. But Judd Zolgad, a couple things Anthony Harris related. Number one, the Vikings and Anthony Harris did not reach a long-term contract extension. So Harris will play on the one-year $11.4 million franchise tag. I can't envision the the way that works is uh, so he gets franchise tagged. It's it's the average of the top five highest paid players at that position, right? Uh, or a hundred twenty percent of your salary from the previous season, whichever one is higher. Mm-hmm. I have a hard time believing the Vikings are going to pay a hundred twenty percent of eleven point four million, which would jack his price tag up to like thirteen or fourteen million for next year. So. This might be the last year of Anthony Harris as a Viking if they can't reach a long-term contract extension. Uh, Of course, the Vikings have been thinking about all of these things for the last several months, and the report that came out, I'm getting this from uh, the Daily Norseman Vikings blog's summation of a Mike Garofolo segment on NFL Network, that the Giants attempted to make a deal with the Vikings before the draft for Anthony Harris, but found that the Vikings, quote, weren't just going to give him away. So the Vikings clearly tried to trade Anthony Harris, Whatever they were asking for, first, second round pick, we don't really know for sure. Their asking price was too high, so they decided let's just roll it forward. We'll we'll franchise tag Anthony Harris, and uh, and and we'll just figure this out later down the road. So, what do you make of? Let's start with Anthony Harris, and then we can get into some other subjects here. So the the news about the proposed trade or uh, talks with the Giants about a trade for Harris is not new. We, we knew that um, Cleveland came calling as well. Yep. And I think uh, Stefanski had a real interest in trying to get Harris on the Browns because he, he clearly knew him from his time here as the offensive coordinator and longtime assistant coach with the Vikings. There are other teams that have been alluded to that called. Now, I do not believe that the day the Vikings slapped the franchise tag on Harris that they had any intention of paying it. I believe that the, the Vikings' intention at that point in time was was we don't want to lose him in free agency for nothing. So we're going to keep him with the franchise tag until we can trade him. To the point of I think that they thought to themselves, realistically, first-round pick, no way. No way, Right. I think they thought to themselves, though, that we can create a bidding war with him under the franchise tag for a second or not and or third round pick. And then that then we'll trade him. He'll go to a new team, negotiate a new contract and and Spielman will have uh, gotten another high draft pick. Clearly, they overvalued what teams were going to pay for Harris. Now, the interesting thing to me, though, it is and. The deeper conversation is not just one player. The deeper conversation is the Vikings' entire approach to the to the off season in 2020 and going into this year. It seems to me like the Vikings have gambled, and I don't know. Lost is probably not the right word, but it seems to me like the Vikings have gambled, and things have not gone exactly how they thought. Harris's contract. Yeah. I really think the intention was to trade him. They they now have an incredible amount of cash uh, tied up in two pretty damn good safeties. Yeah. But I don't think you ever think, you know what, let's make the safety position, both of, of them, uh, among the highest paid players on our team. Uh, Zimmer. I think that there was a thought that if, as we talked about a couple days ago on Purple Daily, if they had lost to the Saints, that he was going to be traded to Dallas. His rights were. And that Stefanski probably takes the head coaching job. That didn't occur. They upset the Saints. So I think what we're looking at in its totality is a team that gambled. And again, I don't want to say they lost because it's not like, oh, my God, you're you're doomed now. You're not. Um, but it's a team that I think thought certain things were going to happen and did not. And the Harris one to me is I don't – I cannot believe – that the day they slapped the franchise tag on him, that they thought to themselves, we are going to be, in July, going into training camp with this guy on that franchise tag. I just don't buy that. So, But I, I sort of like 
so I, I agree with you. I think their initial plan was to train Anthony Harris. They pro- they thought they could get something more than than the offers were showing, and um, and they wound up sort of either diverting to Plan B or Plan C. But it's not that bad of a plan. Right. I don't. I don't. Right. I'm not saying yes. I am not to be clear saying they lost. I think things just went different than they expected in some situations. Right. Like I, I'm with I, you. I look because right now as it stands, they have even when you account for the draft picks that have not been locked in officially yet, they have like six or seven million dollars in cap space left. And there's actually still some free agents sitting out there. There's a couple of veteran cornerbacks out there. Everson Griffin is still, unless there's been something reported, he's no. still a free agent, right? So uh, there has not been. Is Jadeveon Clowney still a free still agent? Still out there. This is go through that that list right now is off the charts weird. Yeah. With with training camp being what now? Two weeks away? So there's like they still have they don't have enough money to get a Jadeveon Clowney, but they still even with the Anthony Harris eleven point four million dollars, they yep. still have some money to do things with. And hell, if they wanted to I'm not a capologist, but if they wanted to extend Dalvin Cook, they could probably roll some of that cap hit into two thousand twenty, right? They could probably bloat his 2020 cap hit. I don't know if it's too late to do that or not. Sure. Uh, but I guess my point is Anthony Harris's contract for 2020, a one-year $11.4 million deal, is not hamstringing them that badly. Mm-hmm. I think if you were to go in and have a long-term contract extension agreement with him, and now you've got now you're locked in for like two or three years paying your safeties twenty plus million dollars, it's not ideal. But it's also not ideal to just give away a really good defensive player on a defensive-centric team for, like, a fourth-round draft pick because, oh, we just want to save an extra $11 million. I'd need to know what are you doing with the $11 million. If you could go back before the draft and before free agency yep. and trade Anthony Harris for, let's say, a second-round pick. Maybe that's the maybe that's what the Vikings wanted, a second-round pick. And they would have done that, yes. What would they have done with the extra money that they, that they saved by not franchise-tagging Anthony Harris? And if the answer is, well, there was a stud left tackle – that they could have had in free agency. Yep. All right. Well, maybe you should have given Anthony Harris away for a fourth round pick. But I don't know that there was a, enough of a needle moving player in free agency that would have made up for how good Anthony Harris is at the back end of that defense that also lacks experience at cornerback to have the safety blanket of two great safeties. Uh, no pun intended. When you don't know what your cornerback situation is, is also something to consider here for 2020. So I don't I don't hate where they wound up with this. Is yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I just don't think that. If you went back to the day in March where they gave Harris the franchise tag, I don't think that they would say that this would be choice A, but it's not a disaster. The interesting thing, though, and this is this is not even a, uh, being critical of the Vikings. The interesting thing is I would love to know what is, is um, on a computer somewhere in Egan about what the plan for 2020 is. Not because, again, to be clear, not because it's going to be a disaster. Not, not because I don't think the Vikings are going to be competitive. I do, um, but it's very. But there are certain things that they're doing that seem very earmarked for the future, and that might be a good idea. But like the Cousins contract extension, which which we continue to talk about and come back to, the heart of that extension was one thing. To free up immediate cap space for 2020, yep. right? Yep. Like, like that's why yep. that's why they did it. They didn't. It's not done because they thought that Kirk is going to be a great quarterback for the long term. It was done because they were desperate and they needed to free up cap space. But look at everything else they've done, and to me, it's a little bit geared at 2021. 22, right? It is, which is funny because you don't have your head coach and your general manager extended to that point. So it, it is, it is. there are some weird things. Like Dalvin Cook's not signed yet. Do you want to keep Dalvin Cook? We're very yeah. unsure right now of that. Isn't it weird right now if you start to look at the things that the Vikings are committed to as a franchise? As of right now, Rick Spielman and Mike Zimmer are both in the last year of their contracts, unless there's been some sort of secret deal behind the scenes and they're just waiting for everyone to show back up at training camp to actually sign paperwork. Like maybe there's something agreed to, but as of right now, yep. the Vikings are more committed to Kirk Cousins yes. than they are to Mike Zimmer, Rick Spielman, Anthony Harris, which he's a safety, Dalvin Cook. Like they are they are much more committed yep. to Kirk Cousins than almost any other key thing in the organization, which is interesting. It feels like it feels like if there is a wink wink deal behind the scenes that's done, it's done with Spielman. 
I, I would agree with that. Like, he's being allowed a lot of flexibility to do things that do not scream, oh, my God, I have to win now. Like have 15 rookies on your roster. Exactly right. Yep. Exactly right. Well, and, and you know, Cook's not done. Is, is he going to get done? We don't know that. Um, but, again, to come back to the Cousins thing, it was done reasons A, B, C, and D yep. were for the cap. I, I think if Cousins had a, a contract that they didn't have to free up cap space from, I don't think that extension gets done. I think it was done because of that. But yeah, if I was to pinpoint and say, if there is, if there's a deal done behind the scenes that we don't know about, it's probably Spielman. But it definitely does not feel like it's the head coach. Yeah, I also want to just circle back on something that we brought up, I think, on last week's episodes of Purple Daily, and that the pillars of a successful NFL organization start with ownership. You know, if you've got train wreck ownership, like we've seen throughout the years in Detroit, in Cleveland, like Cleveland is the most impatient, incompetent ownership in all of professional sports. They're just a total disaster. And maybe they got it right with Kevin Stefanski. If you're Stefanski, you pretty much have to say yes to your first head coaching job. It's like when Mike Redman got his first managerial job with the Marlins. It's like, all right. Unfortunately, you might not you get gotta, a second one, Phil. Right. Like, that's the problem. Like, I know. You, but you have to say yes. But. The Vikings have great ownership, great pro sports ownership. It's it's a it's a group, the Wilfs, that will spend money, that are attentive, uh, that love and understand football, but don't meddle in the front office activities like you might see in Dallas. Like Jerry Jones, yeah. Jerry Jones was rich in the '80s and decided I also like and had a football background, but like was Jerry Jones really qualified to jump in after Jimmy Johnson and him butted heads to be like? the sole creator of Dallas Cowboys that's why personal left. football. No, right? he wasn't. Not, not, like, not whatsoever. You got the itch. The Wilfs don't get that itch. The Wilfs want to be they want to be along for the ride, but they want to they want to empower Rick Spielman and, and company. When you are year after year going at worst seven and nine, eleven and five and thirteen and three at the top end, and you're going to the playoffs every other year or so, mm-hmm. the the last thing you want to do is upset the stability. Like I'm not saying you shouldn't make changes, but if you if you're if you're solid in ownership and your front office is good enough to be bringing in quality players to finish 11 and 5 or 10 and 6 and your head coach at least has a stamp that says great defensive coach in mind and you have a top 5 top 10 defense every year mm-hmm. and your quarterback is fine like i think you should look to make changes to win a super bowl at some point but you don't want you got you want to be careful about getting rid of all three of those things ownership would be the fourth you can't get rid of ownership don't get rid of all three of those things at the same time if your record is good and if you have winning seasons but that's where this on is top of each other. Be, because it does it feel it feels like there is something definitely with the Vikings unfolding right now, but it's going slowly, which is probably a good idea. So to your point, the Wilfs don't walk in the door and <laughs> like Rick, Mike, come here. You're all fired, right? But it but it does feel like this is a slow unfolding of of changes that are coming, and changes that have sort of at least uh, player personnel wise were set up to possibly be made in 2020, yeah. but now aren't going to be made. But but back to the uh, franchise tag on Harris, that that's not the type of thing that cripples you long term. Like Dalvin Cook, yep. same thing. So it does feel like they are slowly but surely taking some steps to change things. And what I would love to know is what is in their minds the plan? What's the ultimate plan? Yeah, it it is it is it's a transition year in some ways. I don't think you know we've been doing our Vikings tail of the tape episodes, and there's definitely teams. The Vikings definitely a playoff contender. They're I don't think they're in any danger of going four and twelve unless a bunch of injuries hit. If Kirk Cousins gets hurt or something in week two, then all bets are off. Uh, but ultimately, like this is kind of a transition year into 2021 for a lot of different reasons, and we just don't really know what it's going to look like from a from a front office or a coaching standpoint in 2021. And here, here to me is the developing point about this entire conversation that potentially takes it in a slightly different direction, but I think is really intriguing. But it has to be factored in. How does the pandemic and the threat of what could happen to your 2020 um, season on the field and financially going forward alter your thinking? I think I think if you're a team and you don't very privately, but you don't sit down and have that conversation. Like, I think if you're just like, all systems go for 2020, we're going to pretend like it's not a pandemic. Like some, Some teams are doing that. It, 
I'm sure that they are, but the that's Chiefs, a but that's a mis- but that's the Browns. But I I think that that is a mistake because you have to be prepared for this year to be shorted. You you have to be prepared to pivot and do things that you didn't expect to do. Uh, because 2020 could be an outlier type of year that's completely different, and in 2021 it could pick up and go back to normal. There, there's just plans, I think, that need to be put in place or contingencies that you would have never thought of before this. I don't think it was a mistake, even though Pat Mahomes now makes like $10 million more per year than any other quarterback with the cap potentially coming down. Sure. Sure. I'm I'm not going to call that a mistake because no, I agree. if that guy winds yeah. up making 50% of the salary cap at some point because the financial floor came out of the NFL because of COVID, like it's it's not going to be that bad. Uh, it's like I want Pat Mahomes as my quarterback. Now paying a defensive player $25 million a year when the cap might come down, that's a very Cleveland Browns move. That's a very Cleveland Browns move. But, yeah, uh, yes. No. But like do the Vikings have plans here that go beyond what we are probably – thinking about right now my guess is that they should yes I, I don't think I don't think this franchise flies by the seat of its pants I don't think I mean there's things to criticize but I don't think this team goes in with plan a and then Whoa, what do we do like shrugging shoulders emoji uh, I think I think they've always got a plan a b and c and uh, I guess we'll see we'll see what happens Harris third round pick I could have done it for a third round pick. I probably wouldn't have traded him for a fourth round pick. Yeah, but but if be- you had, if you had come to me with a third round pick, I probably would have been very intrigued. But the thing, but the thing about a third round pick, like the, the, they they drafted fifteen players, uh-huh. so it would just be a sixteenth player that you would have drafted, or maybe you would have I don't know, maybe you would have found a way to package other picks for some other asset. But so you're going to trade Anthony Harris for a sixteenth rookie, and you're going to save the eleven million dollars. But I need to know what are you spending it on? Like, if the answer is, well, we actually, uh, we were gonna make a run at Jadeveon Clowney, or we were gonna, I would put, we, I would put tra- elsewhere, yeah. trade him for Odell Beckham Jr. and I would fortify it, the offense after Stefan Diggs is gone, or the offensive right, line. Well, I, I would put it elsewhere. Yeah. So, all right. Well, there's more to be uncovered here with the Vikings' plan for 2020 and 21. Thank you for hanging out with us on Purple Daily. Remember, you can help us out by clicking the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash score north. We also have a second YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Mackie Judd, where we do things like action movie rewinds and write that down predictions every single week. We'll see you next time.